Hello, good morning. This is this is the event for for ML Ops. Welcome to to everybody. Um, first, uh, I want to present myself. Uh, my name is Fran Perez. I work as a machine learning engineer for Pen Concepts. So um, let me so. Uh, let me first uh, uh, introduce myself and and uh, and introduce uh, because for today I'm gonna count with my my colleague Kevin that he's gonna present himself. Please, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Are you there? Sorry, my, yes. okay. I, I, was, I was in mute. Uh, uh, yes. So I'm Kevin. I also work as a machine learning engineer in Barcelona um, in, with Fran in his team. So yes, yeah, so in, uh, we are, as, as I said before, we are working for for play concepts. I'm gonna present a little bit about Plain Concepts. Plain Concepts is, is, is an organization that was created uh, 14 years ago by uh, four MVPs from Microsoft, but today we are like uh, 350 employees and we got uh, 12 uh, recognized uh, MVP professionals. And between them, we, we come with two MVPs in the area of artificial intelligence. So we got offices uh, uh, in mainly in Spain, but, but also in, in the States, in the United Kingdom, and, and Germany, and, and Netherlands. So, and, and if, if, you wanna, if you wanna have more information about Plain Concepts, please visit our website at playconcept.com. So, I, after the, the the presentation about the the, the company, we, we are going to start with the with the main event, that is the the MLOps practices. So we are going to talk about the the best practices that you can you can realize in order to build a machine learning solutions. So. Our, our agenda for today is, is going to be the first the first point we are going to introduce uh, the problem that we got in in most of the machine learning projects and why is it hard for us and then in the in the second third and fourth point we are going to present uh, MLOps practices and we are now, and we are going to introduce uh, the what do you need in order to to develop MLOps who is going to be doing this this type of work in so we are going to be talking about the team and processes and we are going to talk as well about the flows about how these teams communicate together. Um, before before we we start, uh, I would like to to announce that you got a kind of of chat box on on your screen where you can where you can is, uh, write whenever you you want your your questions, and we will try to answer as as soon as we can. Um, and then let me let me then make the the first question. The first question is gonna be like a quick poll be, between all of you because we want to know uh, uh, if if you are working in a machine learning project. Uh, did you take your your model to production, or did you have any problem with that? So if we want to know mainly yes or no, but if you want to share any more insight, we will be delighted. So please let us know. Or if you want any other question, just feel free to ask anything. This is 
the thing is that um, there are uh, there are some some uh, the, we we know already the 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 answer to to this question because for example uh, according to deep deep learning dot ai they they run a, a bull and they say that approximately like the 20 percent of the companies that are running uh, machine learning projects they they have successfully uh, deployed the model in production only 20 percent and this is like a, a very is uh, a very is uh, a small figure so we can think what is what is the problem with the machine learning projects so the problem maybe we need in order to to figure out the problem maybe we can take a look uh to the to the um to the life cycle to the machine learning life cycle usually you, you start with the with the raw data and then you need to to prepare this data and in order to prepare this data maybe you need to validate this data you need the, to clean the data you need to uh, uh, aggregate data from different sources and, and, and really uh, sp spend a great deal of time with this kind of preparation and after all this uh, uh, time spent on the data you can go to the next stage that is the the building the model training the model and extracting the the metrics after after you have done this 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 work this is like a a, a first iteration is like we call we call this like experimentation experimentation so you need maybe you need to 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 repeat this kind of flow several times and in order to 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 scale this the your model to to the to all the data that you got on your data lake and then when the when the model is ready you are you are ready to deploy the the model to to production but this is this is a problem that is that is common and at least in in, in software engineer uh, in the software engineer kingdom kingdom so maybe we, we can apply some of the some of the techniques that are applied in the in the software engineer uh, kingdom to the machine learning projects so and this is the the answer that we are looking for the answer is the mlops that the this the mlops are this kind of of best practices that we can use in order to uh, automate and productize the the work all the work that has been done in the experimentation phase in order to 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 take it over to the to the to the production phase so for this i i, I would like to to think about uh, the mlops like a game so in this game we need some components in order to play this game we need as well uh, some persons a team that is gonna and teams that are gonna be playing in this game and we need to think about about some rules in order to play this game so for for a start we are gonna start with the with what you need in order to play this game and for this uh, kevin is gonna present <laughs> Um, so before the components, I want to share one an one answer to the poll that we did. It's from Alex, uh, and he said that they have they have had problems with the ML MLOps, and the main one was to aut automatize training and and deployment, which is actually I think very very common from what we've seen. So if you have any any if you want to share more experience, uh, please. Uh, Send it, and at the end of each section, we will re reply to either your question or the, or like if you want to share experience. So with the components, 
there are many different products that we're gonna use in in MLOps. Uh, a lot of them, like uh, GitHub for, uh, version control of the code or Jenkins or Azure DevOps for the deployment, we are really familiar with from uh, software development. Uh, but then there are also new kind of newer products, like we have. Uh, data products like uh, Data Factory, Databricks, uh, Airflow, which are going to be the execution platform for our models and, and also orchestration. And then we have uh, products that are specific to machine learning, uh, like Google Flow, MLflow, Azure ML, which will cover basically the whole uh, life cycle of the, of the model. In this talk, we're going to focus in this, uh, in this tree. Um, uh, but the concepts that we're going to explain are, are quite generic and, and should apply almost all of all, almost all of them should apply to other products. OK, so uh, let's start with uh, with that with Databricks, uh, a, a quick overview, and then we'll explain kind of why it's useful for machine learning. Uh, it is a unified analytics platform that means that uh, different roles within the organization will be able to use this platform to do, the, to do their jobs. So, uh, for instance, uh, it has uh, uh, within its functionalities, it has the compute platform that that engineers are going to use to run their Spark ETLs. Machine learning engineers are going to use to train their models, etc. Then we have the workspace kind of area, which gives each uh, user like a whole area to have their notebooks and uh, and their scripts for like prototyping, exploration, uh, and, and so on. And also it allows uh, users to collaborate and kind of share the notebooks with others and things like that. Then it has MLflow integrated, which is great. It's already there. You don't need to set it up or anything. It's already with the Databricks uh, installation. And it also comes with Delta Lake, which we'll talk a bit more in the next slide. And finally, it is multi-language. So it's available in Scala, Python, and R. Uh, it is mainly used with Scala and Python, however. And finally, it's available in Amazon and, and Azure. So it's not a specific to Azure. Here we have uh, Delta Lake, uh, which is uh, a layer on top of Spark that has uh, some interesting features. Uh, the main ones are like uh, transactions, so you can do uh, uh, command, you can execute commands like delete in big data, which is kind of uh, not not that common. Then you have schema enforcement, unified batch, and stream processing. And the most interesting for machine learning is the time travel and data snapshots. Uh, which basically means that the history of the data in the table is kept. Uh, you can control for how long it is kept, but this is important uh, to reproduce model executions. So let's say you have a model in production that you trained a week ago and you want to do some debugging, you want to understand why it's giving some production so, uh, predictions, so you can actually go back to the data that it was trained the uh, width and kind of re-execute it and do your debugging. And you can also audit it like, okay, what data was it used to, to train this model? So this will be important for like the data lineage, like to have, know what data was used to train the model. Okay. So the, now we, I want to talk about Azure DevOps very, very quickly as well. It is, uh, it is probably similar to their products like Jenkins and so on, but Azure DevOps uh, has different areas. Uh, it has the boards uh, that uh, that have a kind of a, for agile pro project management, uh, pipelines for deployment, repos, code co uh, source control, then test plans and artifacts. Again, in this talk, we're main, mainly going to talk about uh, repos, which are going to be important for the source control, but also uh, the, for the pull request policies that will, once we are have our, once we want to deploy our prototype, we, we want that product and uh, we will be able to add kind of a layer of quality by having like uh, policies like, okay, for a code to go into master test, need, test need to pass, uh, someone else needs to review it 
and so on. So they will give us a layer of quality and pipelines, which is like for like generation of artifacts, like, okay, uh, like the code artifacts, the package that is going to be deployed, you generate it with the pipelines, then you execute an automated test and you deploy to different environments. And as well here, you can integrate some policies like uh, only this team can approve deployments to production and mm -hmm. things like this. Okay, uh, now MLflow, which is uh, all of these products that are like the more specific to machine learning. It's an open source product uh, maintained by, by Databricks. Uh, the good thing is that it, because it's open source, you can you can set it up, set, set it up locally and play with it. You don't need Databricks, but obviously if you have Databricks, it comes with it and you don't need to install it. And it has different functionalities that cover the, like, uh, the model life cycle. Uh, so starting with tracking, basically with tracking, you can record uh, all the model execution. So let's say every time you train the model, you generate metrics, you generate a model, you have some input parameters. So all that is recorded in, in this kind of a log. So you have a, each execution recorded. Um, then you can query these executions and for instance, search for the one with the highest metric to deploy it uh, and compare different ones if you are doing your prototyping so, uh, and so on. So this is going to be useful both for like when we have a product deployed, but also when we are experimenting and want to compare different uh, iterations. Then we have projects, which are um, basically get conventions to organize your code, uh, like configuration files and like a common structure. Uh, it, it, the advantage is that it's easier to train in platforms like Databricks. You can train in platforms like Databricks without this, but it's, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Then we have models, which is a really nice feature. Uh, it generalizes the model format uh, and it makes deploy deployments easier. Like, let's say, this uh, model's uh, area comes with different model types model, or model flavors, as they call it. So, like, you have uh, scikit-learn, you have Keras, you have TensorFlow, you have PyTorch, you have Spark, uh, also a generic if you want to do custom code. So, you have different different types uh, that will adapt to your, to your model, and you always have the generic one. But then, uh, it kind of wants you to use a, a flavor, the deployment, is the same so it basically you 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 always deploy the same in the same way you need to take care of uh, registering your dependencies uh, and and then the deployment is the same so that kind of makes it a little bit easier to deploy and it comes with uh, between deployments to an api a spark udf and just if you simply want to load it in python as well and that, that also works and uh, finally we have the model registry it's basically a, a registry of the models that we've uh, that we've generated, and you can kind of uh, see which models uh, you have created, which ones you have deployed, which ones are active in its um, uh, in in, the, in its environment, uh, and you can sort of manage all this. And also, you can track the so let's say like the model that it's in production. I can with the tracking functionality, I can know, okay, this model that is in, in production was uh, generated with this specific, with this specific metrics, and if you can also trace it, to, if you have that anemias and you can also trace it to the data, you will know, okay, this model was generated this day with these metrics, these parameters, and we can trace it back to this data. So it, can, it gives a really good traceability as well. Okay, so after 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 seeing all the components that you are gonna need in order to 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 put in place a, a, a best practices for machine learning, so we are gonna review um, the teams and the processes that are gonna taking care of 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 these components. So I I like to to see this 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 chapter like a like a factory in, in this factory in this factory you you got like different stages so and each stage is managed for 
uh, is, is managed by 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 some person like a chief in in some companies you got like many persons working on the same stage and in some companies is the the opposite you you may have uh, the same person that is working in 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 many stages but i think that you can you can see the big picture that usually you got an stage that is experimentation that usually uh, works uh, the works the uh, a data scientist uh, the operationalization stage usually managed by a machine learning engineer and the deployment stage that usually is managed by uh, the operation engineer then you can think that uh, all these stages are divided in, in many areas so usually in in a in a software development project you only got like the code area but the thing is that for for a machine learning project you you may you need as well two areas because the model you you, you need to think that the that the model that you need for for machine learning is 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 an addition between uh, the code and the data so that means that you need to to take care of the different areas in all the stages so let's move forward and review each one of these stages so in the first stage you got the experimentation in the experimentation as you can see you are going to be working with data set samples and then you are going to use uh, your code in order to to build the models usually in the experimentation phase you are going to be using mainly notebooks usually and then these notebooks are going to be executed maybe in databricks maybe in 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 local or virtual machines or any other any other platform that you choose but mainly you mainly the, the data scientists they like to use like the local environment because it's very flexible and they can test many different algorithms so you you need to think that this phase is very agile because the data scientists uh, need, need to, to do a lot of tests and a lot of tuning in order to find the the right model and then for this for example the the, the data scientists can use ml flow as well in order to to keep all the the tests and to track all the tests and for and and then when the all tests has been done they can use a uh, ml flow in order to select the best model so then the the next stage is operationalization this is in this stage and in this stage um, um, the, the data is gonna be like the whole data set so in this stage you you are gonna you need to scale your machine learning uh, uh, application in order to take the whole data set that you got so for this you are maybe you are gonna you need to refactor your code and, and mainly you are gonna have a training pipeline and a an scoring pipeline and besides that you are gonna build a, a, like the traditional a, a pipelines for for integration testing as well and for unit testing then you can use a uh, DevOps or, or Databricks in order to 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 start running your first CI CT CD pipeline and then you are going to be uh, using Databricks in order to to be producing your your first model that is going to be stored uh, using the 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 ML flow uh, models uh, capability 
and 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 finally we got the the deployment phase in the deployment phase the thing that you are gonna be using for example is the mfl feature that lets you uh, do the model registry and this is gonna let you uh, deploy different different models in in different environments you can choose for example different different uh, model deployments like a single model single single mode multiple model shadow model uh, competing models just for for example for doing a b testing and and all the serving is going to be executed in in databricks for example databricks is the is the platform choose if, if you want for example to do uh, batch scoring but for example if you need uh, to do some online scoring usually you choose another type of, of platforms that that scale very well for example uh, kubernetes and you are gonna be using this scoring in in a lot of applications like analytics application or visualization uh, uh, application and um, and for this you are gonna be uh, using that for example uh, you need to monitor the the model as well and for this you can use for example application insights as well to, to keep all the all the monitoring um, and and for example the uh, we keep um, we keep a trace of of the of of the drift of the data. So uh, and then after after we saw all all the all the stages that take part on the on the on the game, we are gonna see we are gonna review the the rules that that are used in, in in this game so the first flow that we are going to review is the the operationalize uh, flow so in this flow is going to cover the transition between experimentation and the operate and the operationalization stage so for this i uh, i like to 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 review a uh, some some kind of um, strategy that we've seen among among our customers that is repeated when they are starting working with databricks when when they start working with databricks they start just developing the the notebooks on the on on the databricks platform using their their native uh, notebooks and then they commit all the changes in DevOps and then they use DevOps, the release pipeline in order to deploy the notebooks to, to uh, different uh, environments. But using uh, MLOps best practices, you can you can do the things in, 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 a, in a more modern way. So the thing that you can that we used to do is like um, to to do all the development just in in local machine and then you can use for example databricks connects in order to connect to the to the databricks cluster and then but it ma that makes uh, more that that makes more more useful in is makes more useful because you can uh, store all your your code in using uh, Azure, Azure um, repos, repos and then you can make a for example a peer reviews that is another a common DevOps good practice and then you can uh, um, uh, make build pipelines using Azure DevOps and then you can pass all your unit and integration tests and then you can uh, for example use the release pipeline and then using the release pipeline you can you can use the get release in order to have some person that has to 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 manage the the, the deployment to to production environment for example and then the the following the following flow is is the refine flow this is the flow that is gonna 
that this gonna be uh, controlling the, the refinement of the model. But for that, we need to 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 have to need we need to change the the picture and we need to to add another stage to our diagram and and introduce the ingestion phase and we need to see like in order to to have a a really iterable process we need to to add an orchestration to our diagram this orchestration is going is going to be a is it's going to be possible in order to 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 control all the iterations um, and, and iterate the model and, and make better predictions. And with this, I think that we can finalize our, our talk. So, I don't know if there is any question, but... Kevin? Mm, we don't have uh, okay. any, any question, uh, but okay. if you think of something and you want to kind of send it afterward or something, we just get back to you. Okay. So this is great. Uh, I just want to to present the the next the next event that is 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 taking place this evening. So if you wanna watch the the talk about how to how to improve the efficiency in deep learning models, please make sure and, and don't lose it. <laughs> so if you want to contact with us, uh, please, you can send us as well an email. Um, and thank you for, for watching this event. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.